Hi everyone. So today's lesson is going to be regarding chapter 9, which is all about alcohols, ethers, and related compounds. Here's a brief outline of this chapter. So we're going to talk about alcohols, ethers, and epoxides, and how they're different from one another. One of the main similarities between them is that they contain an oxygen atom bonded to an sp3 hybridized carbon. And so the oxygen atom itself is a tetrahedral or it has a tetrahedral geometry and then we're also going to look at nomenclature how do we name uh, the different types of alcohols how do we name ethers and epoxides and then we're going to take a look at the different types of reactions involving these three different uh, organic compounds we're going to take a look at the hydration reactions carbocation rearrangement and how to convert alcohols to alkyl halides so we know that alkyl halides can undergo several different types of chemical reactions, which you learned in the previous uh, two chapters. You learned alkyl halides can undergo substitution reaction as well as uh, elimination reaction. And so because alcohols are not very good leaving groups or don't contain any good leaving groups, we have to convert them to alkyl halides before you can perform any substitution or elimination reaction. And then we're also going to take a look at alkyl tosylates and the reaction of ethers, thiols, sulfides, and epoxides. So first let's take a look at the chemical structure of alcohols, ethers, and epoxides and how we can differentiate these three different organic compounds. So the main similarity between them is the presence of carbon to oxygen sigma bonds. So you can see that we have an alcohol, ether, and epoxide all containing an oxygen atom with single bonds. So they only contain sigma bonds. You're already familiar with alcohols and ethers because you've already seen them before. You have a hydroxy group in alcohol and you have an ether group in ethers. Epoxides are similar to ether in such a way that they also contain an ether group. The only difference here is that you have an ether within a cyclic ring. So that's what epoxides are. The chemical structure of alcohols contain a hydroxy group bonded to an sp3 hybridized carbon. And these alcohols can be classified based on the type of carbon bonded to hydroxy group. So if we have a primary carbon bonded to a hydroxy group, then we have a primary alcohol. If we have a secondary carbon bonded to a hydroxy group, then we have a secondary alcohol. And a tertiary carbon bonded to that hydroxy group is a tertiary alcohol. So here's an example of a compound, cortisol, which is an anti-inflammatory steroid containing three different types of alcohols. So we have a primary alcohol, secondary, and a tertiary alcohol. This one is considered primary alcohol because the hydroxy group is bonded to a primary carbon. We have a secondary alcohol here because the hydroxy group is bonded to a secondary carbon. And finally, we have a tertiary alcohol because the hydroxy group is bonded to a tertiary carbon. There are also other organic compounds containing a hydroxy group bonded on sp2 hybridized carbon atoms and these are called enols and phenols and both enols and phenols undergo different types of chemical reactions compared to alcohols and those reactions won't be covered in this chapter or in this class. So again we have an enol and phenol. An enol is basically short for alkenol because we have a hydroxy group bonded to an alkene and then for phenol we have a hydroxy group bonded to a phenyl ring. Here's the general structure of an ether. So you have an oxygen that's bonded to two alkyl groups and these alkyl groups can be either identical or different. So if you have two alkyl groups that are identical then we call that symmetrical ether. Otherwise it's going to be unsymmetrical ether. So an example of a symmetrical ether is diethyl ether. Is shown here and this one right here is called uh, ethyl methyl ether and there's actually several different ways to name ethers and so we're gonna take a look at the nomenclature of ethers later on in this chapter so here's the general structure of epoxides you can see that epoxides are also ethers because of the fact that the oxygen atom is bonded to two sp3 hybridized carbon atoms two R groups the only difference between epoxides and ethers is the fact that the oxygen atom is contained within a ring. And so because it's part of a cyclic ring, 
uh, the sigma bonds are restricted from their bond rotation, unlike in a normal ether. And as you can see here, the bond angle within this epoxide ring is only 60 degrees, which considerably deviates from the ideal bond angle of 109.5. And so it actually makes this epoxide ring a lot more unstable and reactive compared to ethers. And here are some of the other similarities and differences between these three organic compounds in terms of hybridization and geometry. The oxygen atom in alcohols, ethers, and epoxides is sp3 hybridized. And both alcohols and ethers have a bent shape because of the fact that the oxygen atom contains two lone pairs of electrons and two sigma bonds. And the bond angle around the oxygen atom in an alcohol is about 109 degrees, whereas for an ether, it's 111. And so in both cases, they're both pretty close to the ideal tetrahedral bond angle of 109.5, compared to an epoxide's bond angle of only 60 degrees. And finally, since the oxygen atom is more electronegative compared to a carbon or a hydrogen, the carbon to oxygen and oxygen to hydrogen bonds are considered polar. And so you can exploit these differences in electronegativities uh, and use them as reactive sites in a lot of organic chemical reactions. So how do we name alcohols using the IUPAC system? So the very first step here is to identify the longest carbon chain. So the longest carbon chain is this. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we have a total of six carbon atoms. And so the alkane here is going to be hexane. So we have a hexane because it contains six carbon atoms. And then the next step here is to replace the suffix E with OL. So we're going to replace that with an OL because it's an alcohol. And so in that case, we have a hexanol. So that's the very first step here. The second step here is to number the carbon chain to give the hydroxy group the lower number and then apply all the other rules of nomenclature. And so we're going to label the carbon atoms from right to left so that the hydroxy group gets the lower number. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And then we're going to apply the other rules of nomenclature so you can see that we have a methyl group bonded to the fifth carbon. So this is 5-methyl. And you see that the hydroxy group is bonded to the third carbon. And so this is hexen, and then the number 3, and then OL in the end, because this is a hexanol. So we have 5-methyl hexen 3 all. So this is the name of this alcohol. What about for alcohols containing cyclic rings? How do we name them? When a hydroxy group is bonded to a ring, the carbon atoms within the ring are numbered beginning with the one that's bonded directly to the hydroxy group. So let's say, for example, that we have this cyclohexane ring here, and the carbon atom directly bonded to the hydroxy group will be labeled number one. So that's our first carbon atom. And then because the functional group is at C1, then the one is usually omitted from the name. So instead of cyclohexan one all, we can just name it cyclohexanol. And then the ring is then numbered in a clockwise or a counterclockwise fashion to give the next substituent the lower number. And so, for example, over here, our next substituent is the methyl group. And so you would count this or count the carbon atoms counterclockwise instead of counterclockwise. Same thing over here. So how do we name this first example here on the left? So this one would be a cyclohexanol, and then you have a methyl group on the third carbon. And so the name of this alcohol would be 3-methylcyclohexanol. And for this second example here, we have three methyl groups. So we have two, we have a methyl group on the second carbon, 
and then two methyl groups on the fifth carbon. So this one would be 2,5,5-trimethylcyclohexanol. So that's 2,5,5-trimethylcyclohexanol. Simple alcohols are known by their common names, and in order to name a simple alcohol, all you have to do is name all the carbon atoms of the molecule as a single alkyl group followed by the word alcohol. Here's an example. So this group right here is isopropyl because it contains three carbon atoms, and so we have an isopropyl group here. And we know this is an alcohol because it contains a hydroxy group. And so the name of this alcohol is simply isopropyl alcohol. We can also use the IUPAC system to name this alcohol. So you can see that the longest carbon chain contains three carbon atoms. And then the hydroxy group is bonded to the second carbon atom. And so we can call this propon-2-all because the hydroxy group is bonded to the second carbon atom and then the longest carbon chain contains three carbon atoms. There are also organic compounds containing multiple hydroxy groups. Compounds containing two hydroxy groups are known as diols or glycols. Compounds with three hydroxy groups are known as triols. So let's take a look at some examples here. For the first compound here on the left we have a molecule containing two hydroxy groups and so this is going to be a diol or a glycol and because this molecule contains two carbon atoms this is going to be an ethane based so this is ethane 1 2 diol so we have 1 2 diol because we have carbons 1 and 2 here this second compound here contains three hydroxy groups, so this is going to be a triol. And because it contains three carbon atoms, it's going to be propane-based. So we have propane 1, 2, and 3 triol. So you can see that uh, each carbon atom, we can label this 1, 2, and 3, each contain a hydroxy group and so this is named propane 1 2 3 triol and for the third molecule here we have a diol we have two hydroxy groups and it's cyclopentane so we have a cyclopentane cyclopentane and then the location of the hydroxy group so that's 1 comma 2 and then diol and notice the stereochemistry here. You can see that the orientation of the hydroxy groups are opposite, are on the opposite sides of the ring. And so we have a trans here. So this is a trans cyclopentane 1, 2 diol. So here's practice problem number two give the IUPAC name for each compound. So for the first alcohol here, the longest chain contains five carbon atoms. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And then we're going to label these carbon atoms so that the hydroxy group, or the carbon atom that's bonded to the hydroxy group, uh, will be the lowest number. And so in that case, one over here, we're going to label it from, one, uh, from right to left. One, two, three, four, and five. And so as you can see, because we have five carbon atoms, on the longest chain, this is going to be a pentane based. All right, and you can see that on the third carbon atom, we have a dimethyl group. And so we have a 3 3 dimethyl. And because we have a pentane base, this is going to be dimethyl penten 1 all. All right, again, that one indicates that the hydroxy group is bonded to the first carbon atom. If it was a cyclic ring, you don't have to include the one because it's already implied that the hydroxy group would be bonded to the first carbon atom. 
And so for this one example, it's going to be 3,3-dimethyl pentin 1-ol. For the second example here, we have a cyclic ring containing six carbon atoms. So this is going to be a cyclohexane-based alcohol. Cyclohexane. And then we're going to start labeling the carbon atoms starting from the carbon that's bonded directly to the hydroxy group. So this is going to be carbon 1. And then the second one is up top. So this is going to be the second carbon atom because we want the second substituent to have a lower number. And so we can label the carbon atoms counterclockwise. And so this is a 2-methyl cyclohexanol. So we have 2-methyl, 2-methyl cyclohexanol, cyclohexanol. So notice that we didn't have to include 1 hexan one all because of the fact that this is a cyclic ring. It's already implied that the first uh, carbon atom is the one that's bonded directly to the hydroxy group. So this is 2-methyl cyclohexanol. And notice the position or the orientation of the substituents. They are in cis position. Okay, so cis and trans isomers are possible in alkenes as well as in cyclic rings. And so here we have a cis position. So this is going to be cis, this is cis 2-methyl cyclohexanol. And for the third example here, the longest... Uh, carbon chain here contains a total of nine carbon atoms. So let's start counting here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So since we have a total of nine carbon atoms in the longest chain, this is going to be a no name based alcohol. No name. All right. And then uh, so we want the carbon that's bonded directly to the hydroxy group hydroxy group to have the lowest number and so we can label them from right to left so we have one two three four five six seven eight and nine and so uh, on the fifth carbon atom we have an ethyl group so this is five I'm just gonna put it right up here this is five ethyl five ethyl and then on the sixth carbon, we have a methyl group. So that is 6-methyl. We have a 6-methyl. All right. And then all we have to do now is combine, um, combine the uh, name here. So we're going to alphabetize this. So 5-ethyl comes first. So I'm just going to write it down here. 5-ethyl. And then 6 methyl 6 methyl and then um, this is no nan no nan okay so it's no nan hyphen and then on the third carbon we have a hydroxy group and then ol in the end all right so that's the name of this Alcohol. So again, it's 5 ethyl 6 methyl nonen 3 all. For this fourth molecule here, uh, there's a total of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 carbon atoms on the longest chain. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 carbon atoms. So this is heptane based alcohol. And Again, we're going to label the carbon atoms so that the hydroxy group gets the lowest number. And so that would be from right to left. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. So notice that the uh, third carbon has the hydroxy group. The fourth carbon has an isopropyl group. So this is 4 isopropyl. Isopropyl. And then on the fifth carbon, we have a methyl group. So that is 5-methyl. Five, 5-methyl. Five five okay, so those are the substituents. And so I comes first before M. And so that's going to be 4-isopropyl. So 4-isopropyl. 
hyphen five methyl. Five methyl, and then heptanol. So we have heptin, and then on the fourth, third carbon atom, we have on the third carbon atom, we have a hydroxy group. So this is 3OL. All right, so the name of this alcohol is 4 isopropyl 5 methyl heptin 3 all. For part E, we have two hydroxy groups here. So this is going to be a diol. And um, the longest carbon chain contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So let's label those 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. So this is going to be a hexane based. All right. And then um, again, the first carbon atom will be this one right here because it's directly bonded to a hydroxy group and it has the lowest number. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And you can see that we have a methyl group on carbons number two and four. So this is two comma four dimethyl. All right, so that's two comma four dimethyl. And then for the, the uh, name for this molecule, that would be two comma four dimethyl so that's dimethyl and then hexane followed by the number of or the position of the two alcohol or hydroxy group so that's one and three so that would be two four dimethyl hexane one three all or one three diol all right, so let me create some space here. So again, that's two comma four dimethyl hexane hyphen one three diol. All right, so that's the name of this molecule. And for the last molecule here, we have a hydroxy group that's bonded to a cyclohexane ring. So we have a cyclohexanol in that case cyclohexanol so again we don't have to put one here because uh, it's already implied that the hydroxy group is bonded directly to the first carbon atom so this is our first carbon atom followed by this one third fourth all right and on the third carbon atom we have a tert butyl so this is a tert butyl group tert butyl and then on the fourth carbon we have an ethyl group so four ethyl all right so again we're going to alphabetize this butyl comes first before ethyl so in that case we have a three hyphen tert butyl tert butyl hyphen four ethyl four ethyl and then cyclohexanol. So I'm going to create some space here. Cyclohexanol. Cyclohexanol. All right, so that's the name of this molecule. We have 3 tert butyl 4 ethyl cyclohexanol. And here's another practice problem. Give the structure corresponding to each name. So the first one here is 77 dimethyl octane for all. So we have a carbon atom, or the longest chain here contains eight carbon atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And on the fourth carbon atom, one, so let's connect these eight dots here. Let's say that on this fourth carbon atom, we have the hydroxy group. And then on the seventh carbon atom, so we have one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven, there's a dimethyl. All right, so this is the structure for this alcohol. For part B here, we have 5-methyl-4-propyl 
heptane three all so we have a heptane base here with seven carbon atoms so we have one two three four five six and seven so let's go ahead and connect these dots here and on the third carbon atom so let's say this is the third carbon atom we have a hydroxy group so we have three here four and then five and on the fourth carbon atom we have a propyl group so we have one two and three all right so that's the propyl group and on the fifth carbon atom we have a methyl group so here's a methyl group all right so that's going to be the structure for five methyl four propyl heptan three all and for the third one here we have two tert butyl three methyl cyclohexanol so we have a cyclohexane based so we have one two three four five six it's a cyclohexane and then we have a hydroxy group bonded directly to this cyclohexane ring and then we can call this carbon one carbon two and three on the third carbon atom we have a methyl group so here's the methyl group and then on the second carbon atom we have a tert butyl group so let's create some space here so we have a tert butyl one two and three so this is a tert butyl group so this is the structure for 2 tert butyl 3 methyl cyclohexanol and for the last one here we have trans cyclohexane 1 2 diol so again we have a cyclohexane based here and the two adjacent carbon atoms will have a hydroxy group and it says over here that these hydroxy groups are in transposition so that means that one is going to be a normal wedge and the other one's going to be a dash wedge all right so this is trans cyclohexane one two diol so that's basically how you name acyclic alcohols and cyclic alcohols so now let's move on to ethers how do we name ethers so there are two different types of ethers. There's sim simple ethers, and there's also complex ethers. The simple ethers are usually assigned their common names. And so how do we assign the common names? Well, we name both the alkyl groups bonded to the oxygen atom, and then we're going to arrange these names alphabetically and add the word ether. And so for symmetrical ethers, we have to name the alkyl group and add the prefix di. Okay, so for example, here we have a diethyl ether. We have two ethyl groups bonded to the oxygen atom. So we have a diethyl ether here. But for unsymmetrical ethers like this one, it's going to be a little bit more complicated. Uh, so we have we still have to name both alkyl groups. So the first one here on the left is a methyl group. And then this alkyl group on the right is a sec butyl group and then we're gonna have to name them alphabetically or arrange them alphabetically and then followed by the word ether so in this case we have sec butyl so sec butyl comes first before methyl so we have sec butyl methyl ether so again that's sec butyl methyl ether And for the more complex ethers, they are named using the IUPAC system. So one alkyl group is named as a hydrocarbon chain, and then the other is named as part of a substituent bonded to that chain. So for example, we can name the simpler alkyl group as an alkoxy substituent by changing the YL ending of an alkyl group to an oxy. So an example is this. Instead of a methyl oxygen or a methyl group, we call this methoxy substituent. So it's basically a combination of the methyl group 
and the oxygen. So methyl plus oxygen equals methoxy. An ethyl plus an oxygen is an ethoxy. And then a tert butyl plus oxygen is a tert butoxy. And then we're going to name the remaining alkyl group, which is the parent chain, as a, a normal alkane with the alkoxy group as a substituent bonded to the chain. And so, for example, if we have uh, a pentane as the parent, then we would call this methoxy pentane. Or let's say the parent chain is a hexane, it would be an ethoxy hexane, and so on and so forth. So here's an example. Give the IUPAC name for the following ether. So you can see that this oxygen is bonded to two substituents. And the first thing that you want to do here is to pick the simpler substituent. So you can see that this is the simpler substituent right here. And so we have a two carbon substituent and the oxygen atom. So we can call this an ethoxy. So this is ethoxy because we have an ethyl group plus the oxygen, which makes it an ethoxy. And then find the longest carbon chain here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is an octane. This is an octane uh, parent chain, octane here. And then the ethoxy group or substituent is bonded to the fourth carbon atom. So again, this is carbon one, two, three, and four. So on the fourth carbon atom, we have an ethoxy group. And so in that case, we have four hyphen ethoxy octane. And here's practice problem number four, name each of the following ethers. So again, we're gonna look at the simpler substituent here. So the first one would be this one right here. So this is a methoxy group. And then the parent chain contains one, two, three, and four. So this is a butane um, alkane. So we have methoxybutane. So that's one methoxybutane. And you can also name this using its more common name, which is um, methyl. So this is methyl group right here. This is a butyl group. So that would be butyl methyl ether. So that is butyl methyl ether. All right, what about for the second molecule here? So let's create some space here. For the second molecule here, again, you can um, use this as the parent chain right here, which is a cyclohexane. So we have a cyclohexane here. And then this alkoxy as a substituent. So we have a methyl group. So this is a methoxy group here. So this is a methoxy. And so we can just call this methoxy cyclohexane. And for the more common name, we have a methyl group and a cyclohexyl group here. So in that case, cyclohexyl group goes first before methyl. And so that would be cyclo, so I'll put an or here, cyclohexyl, cyclohexyl, methyl, ether. And for the third structure here, you can see that this is more of a complex ether. And so we're going to name this using the IUPAC system. And the simpler substituent here is this one right here. So this is a methyl group combined with an oxygen is a methoxy. So this is a methoxy group. And then the second substituent here bonded to the oxygen atom 
uh, will be the alkane chain. So we're going to have to find the longest carbon chain here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And we want the methoxy group to have the lowest number. And so we're going to name this from right to left, or we're going to label the carbon atoms from right to left. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And so on the second carbon atom, we have a methoxy group. So this is two methoxy. And then on the third carbon atom, we have a methyl group. So that's three methyl. And then on the fourth carbon atom, we have an ethyl group, four ethyl. And so because we have seven carbon atoms, this is going to be a heptane-based um, ether. And so this is heptane because it has seven carbon atoms. And then we're going to alphabetize this. So 4-ethyl comes first. So that would be 4-ethyl followed by methoxy. So methoxy comes first before methyl. So that would be 2-methoxy. And then 3-methyl. So I'm going to create some space here. Hyphen three, okay, create a little bit more space, methyl. All right, so that's the name of this molecule, 4-ethyl-2-methoxy-3-methylheptane. And for the last structure here, we have the simpler substituent right here because it contains one, two, three carbon atoms. So this is propyl-based, and you add oxygen, you have a propoxy substituent. So this is propoxy right here. Propoxy. So that's a propoxy group. And then we have this cyclohexane ring right here. So this is cyclohexane. And then we have an ethyl group. And so when we're naming or numbering the substituents in a cyclic ring, we have to number the one that comes first alphabetically. So this is an ethyl group. So we're going to name this or label this carbon as the first carbon. So this is one and then two, three, and then four propoxy. So in that case, we have a one ethyl, one ethyl group followed by four propoxy cyclohexane. Propoxy cyclohexane. So let me create some space here. And then cyclohexane. Oops. Cyclohexane. Copy that. And paste. So cyclohexane. So that's 1-ethyl-4 propoxy cyclohexane. And then you can see that the propoxy group is in transposition with the ethyl group. And so that's the stereochemistry. We're going to put trans here. So that's the name of the molecule. Trans 1-ethyl-4 propoxy cyclohexane. So now let's take a look at epoxide nomenclature. How do we name epoxides? There's actually several different ways to name them. Uh, we can name them as an epoxy alkane, as oxyranes, or as alkene oxides. In order to name an epoxide as an epoxy alkane, First, we're going to name the longest alkane chain as a parent chain or ring to which the oxygen atom is attached. And then we're going to use the prefix epoxy to name the epoxide as a substituent. And then finally, we're going to use two numbers to designate the location of the atoms to which the oxygen is bonded. And so, for example, if we have this cyclohexane ring here, and you can see that the oxygen atom is bonded to carbons 1 and 2. And so in that case, whenever we're naming this, we're going to name it as a cyclohexane and then epoxy as the substituent. So the substituent, the epox epoxide substituent is bonded to carbons 1 and 2. So this is 1, 2, epoxy cyclohexane. And for the second one here, we're going to have to pick the longest uh, alkane chain here, which contains a total of uh, three carbon atoms. So this is going to be named as a propane because it contains three carbon atoms. And then uh, we have the oxygen that's bonded to carbons one and two, in which 
uh, a methyl group is also bonded to the second carbon. And so we're going to name this 1,2-epoxy 2-methylpropane. So again, that's 1,2-epoxy 2-methylpropane. So the epoxy comes first before the methyl group. And for the third molecule here, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to count the longest carbon chain. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we know that this is going to be a pentane. And then the oxygen atom is bonded to carbons 2 and 3. So we have a 2, 3 epoxy pentane. And because we have a methyl group and an ethyl group right here that are in trans, uh, in cis position, this is going to be a cis 2,3 epoxy pentane. So we can also name epoxides as oxyranes. Epoxides bonded to a chain of carbon atoms can also be named as derivatives of oxyrane. And this is what an oxyrane looks like. It's the simplest epoxide out there. You have an oxygen bonded to two carbon atoms. And of course, you have two hydrogen atoms bonded to each carbon and so again this is the simplest epoxide out there and it's called an oxyrane. The oxyrane ring is numbered to put the oxygen atom at position 1 and then the first substituent at position 2 and there's not going to be any number used for a substituent in a mono substituted oxyrane so that means that if we have a let's say carbon atom here or a methyl group bonded to this um, carbon we don't have to number that substituent so we just call it uh, methyl oxyrane. However, if you have multiple uh, sub multiple substituent, like for example here you have two methyl groups bonded to uh, the second carbon, then we'll call this 2,2-dimethyl oxyrane. Epoxides can also be named as alkene oxides since they are often prepared by adding an oxygen atom to an alkene structure. And so in order to name an epoxide as an alkene oxide, all you have to do is mentally replace this oxygen atom with a double bond. And so if you were to replace this with a double bond, what you have is an ethylene molecule. And then uh, all you have to do now is add the word oxide. So that's an ethylene oxide. So here's practice problem number five. Name each epoxide. So the first one here, um, it's asking us to name this epoxide in two different ways. So we can name it as an oxyrane, you can name it as an alkene oxide, or you can name it as an epoxy alkane. So let's let's do uh, epoxy alkane and oxyrane here. So this is a simple oxyrane, right? This part right here. And then you have a methyl group that's bonded to it. And because we only have one substituent bonded to this um, oxyrane, then we just call it methyl oxyrane. So this is methyl oxyrane. All right, another way to name this is by naming it as an epoxy alkane. So uh, we're going to find the longest carbon chain here. So we have one, two, and three. And so this is going to be a propane. So it's going to be a one, two, epoxy propane. So for the second molecule here, you can see that we have a cyclohexane ring and attached to the cyclohexane ring is an epoxide. And so we're going to treat this epoxide as a substituent. And so therefore we can name it as an epoxy cyclohexane. So this is going to be an epoxy alkane. So we have a cyclohexane here. And then because we have a methyl group that's bonded to this carbon atom, this is going to be our first carbon followed by this carbon right here. And so we have a 1,2 epoxy. All right, so that's going to be a 1, 2 epoxy. And then you can see that on the first carbon, we have a methyl group. So that's, this is going to be a 1, 2 epoxy 1, and then hyphen methyl. So let me create some space here. 1 methyl cyclohexane. So that's going to be the name of this epoxide here. Again, that's 1,2-epoxy-1-methyl-cyclohexane. 
And for the last molecule here, we can name this two different ways. We can name this as an oxorane or as an epoxy alkane. So how do we name this as an oxorane? So again, you, can, you have this um, oxorane right here. And whenever you're naming it as an oxorane, the oxygen atom has position one, and then this carbon will be position two, and the propyl group in position three, right? So methyl comes first, so that's gonna be uh, counted as second or number two. So this is methyl. And then we have a propyl group. We have one, two, three carbons. So this is a propyl group. M comes first before P. So again, this is going to be labeled number two and then the propyl number three. And so you can also see the uh, stereochemistry here of the two groups. So they're both in the cis position. So this is going to be a cis. And then methyl comes first before propyl. So that would be two methyl, two methyl, and then three propyl, and then oxorane. So that's going to be the name of this molecule as an oxorane. So again, that's cis, two methyl, three propyl oxorane. And we can also name this as an epoxy alkane. So the first thing that you want to do here is to count the longest carbon chain. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And so this is going to be a hexane. We're going to name this as an epoxy hexane. And uh, basically the epoxide here will be a substituent. That's why we're calling it as, a, as epoxy. So um, again, this is hexane. And the oxygen is bonded to carbons 2 and 3. So this is going to be 2 comma 3 epoxy hexane. And again, because we have these two carbon atoms that are oriented uh, facing towards the front, then we're still going to have to call this cis isomer. So this is, again, cis-2,3-epoxy hexane.